Okay, so I'd just like to start with a quick intro to the music there, as it were, which was created for me by uh, Chi and Ether Music Limited and sent to me a few days ago. There's a much uh, longer part to that. Oh, it's a much longer track, actually, which is really good, so I'll probably use that in a later video. Um, but um, going on to more stuff, uh, I just wanted to go through a few things which have come my way in the last uh, week or two. Um, firstly, uh, being a man of a certain age in the UK, um, I'm, of course, being looked after by our wonderful National Health Service. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the stuff they do is great, but some of the stuff they've been doing recently is very sinister. And I think the, the clue to that uh, sinister side is shown on this cover of this booklet that I was sent, which I've scanned, uh, which I sent, I was sent, was sent uh, about a week ago. And uh, you can see this uh, clue, I think, uh, to what is sinister. Uh, in the bottom left here somewhere, or but towards the bottom, towards towards the left, but not the left. Uh, so see what you think of that, and do a bit of research if you're not familiar. Uh, somebody sent me this uh, a couple of days ago, which I liked. Um, kind of sums up my feelings on the issues, um, so I've posted that in an update as well. Uh, very good banner there. Um, so that was uh, really good. And... Um, then a few more freedom of information requests have uh, been shown in the last few days and been posted on Facebook and places like that. Uh, this one was quite interesting from Scotland uh, and basically um, the, the answer to your question is 596 deaths involving, involving COVID-19 has been, should say have been really, registered where there has been no pre-existing medical condition between March 2020 and January 2021. So even if we take the uh, test as valid and everything, and that COVID is a real thing, you know, based on that test and everything, they can still only list 596 deaths in a population of 5 million in uh, 10 months. So again, make of that what you will. In a similar vein, um, I did a freedom of information request to uh, Nottinghamshire Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust and asked them for lists of hospital admissions and uh, this is what they sent me back. So in 2018 we had 3365, 2019 3351 and 2020 of course 2801. Now somebody, a couple of people have pointed out to me that this particular trust isn't the one with the ones with the big hospitals, that's apparently the University Hospitals Trust uh, which I didn't do an FOI to. So these are just like smaller hospitals. I don't think they have an A and E and they don't have, you know, uh, a big sort of set of operations going on and stuff. Nevertheless, if we were in the middle of a pandemic where every hospital bed was needed, etc., etc., you know, and they opened up these Nightingale centres and all this, that and the rest of it, this figure would not have gone down. It's just gone down by about 16% compared to the previous year. And um, we've seen a similar pattern everywhere else as well. Um, similar one that somebody posted on Facebook when I posted that, an, an FOI to Sussex. Um, we have here that how many people have died from COVID-19 in the Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust Hospitals from 1st of January 2020 to 20th of March 2021. This is to include only patients who had positive COVID-19 tests and not died with pre-existing conditions. And their response to that was one patient died in a Sussex Partnership Hospital um, one patient in, in a year. Uh, and then the second question was, how many patients at Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust are there are currently with confirmed COVID-19? None. So that is the extent of the pandemic, folks, for which they're doing all this stuff, you know, which I don't even need to mention. Okay, so moving on to another thing that's come up in the last sort of week or two, maybe a bit longer, but it was, I think, about a week ago, a couple of people sent me this. Um, this thing about the mask worms, I'll just play a bit of this video which is uh, posted when? On April the 18th, so that's about uh, nine days ago. I'll just play a bit of this. We've, we've seen the videos that are available on, being around on YouTube, low quality, all amateur, but you took things to another level. You've got a really good microscope, you've got a very good camera, and let's have a look at the footage you've got from there. I don't know how clear this is through the camera, but this is moving. Oh, yeah. Yes. 
comparison of a really floaty cotton thread. So this cotton thread, you blow yeah. and it's just, it goes miles away. Mm. Okay, so that's there with the worm kind of, sorry, my hands really don't look like cotton things and worms. You were much better at it. But um, basically the, the worm was... So I'll include links in the description to this. Um, but this lady, Dr. Anonymous, uh, gets very agitated about these so-called mask worms. And I was a bit suspicious of this uh, video. I've written this up in an article. I'll put all the links in the description. Uh, because this good doctor, she urges that it's really important for people to know about the worms. And she says things like, well, anyone that's got a microscope should be getting out that out and looking at the, uh, you know, the worms in the masks and stuff. And um, but there's actually only one worm seen in the video, as you saw in that brief clip. You saw it briefly. Again, you can play the whole thing once you've looked at the link if you want to. But she doesn't show how where she opened the masks, where she got them from. She, they talk about them being made by f like five different companies, but none of them are named. They are briefly referred to as nano worms, but of course those wouldn't be visible with an optical microscope, and that's what they're showing in the video there. Um, few real details of the microscope. She, apparently she tells this story that she's got to spend this, all this money getting a fancy microscope to get the best picture she can. But actually, um, you know, when you look at that, that story doesn't seem to stand up. Um, and she talks about them being flatworms, but these, again, need a moist environment. Uh, I don't think they'd survive packed in a mask for weeks and months. They would just, you know, they wouldn't revive themselves. Um, so anyway, I found this other video. In fact, I think somebody sent me this one as well. Uh, and this sort of goes through this. And this guy. And those strange moving fibers that you see. Well, I he kind of has a much better image uh, of, of, of these fibers as well. And you can see he actually tests this. Uh, and they seem to move, and it is actually breath, even though it looks like an organic movement. You can actually see from the shape of these that they are actually fibres, and he proves this if you go through the video. So I think this uh, mask video is just disinformation, uh, meant to sort of scare people who are wearing masks, and people like us who say don't wear a mask will add on a bit to that and say don't wear a mask because they're full of worms, and they're actually not. These are not worms, they're just fibres, and this is... You know, what the uh, the other thing that's not in this video with the good lady doctor uh, is that they don't say, well, masks don't do anything anyway. They don't quote any of the mask studies, to my knowledge, that you shouldn't even be wearing a mask anyway. There's no need. You know, we've we've covered all of that before uh, here and uh, elsewhere. So this is just, I think, disinformation. And I think this woman is probably an actor. So if that's true, and she is an actor, I don't have any proof of that, but listening to her voice and the emphasis that she puts on things, this means, again, that this is another psyop. They're putting these things out there to make people scared, to distract from the truth, and make people look idiotic. And somebody's put money into this, you know. Uh, and, of course, this video here I don't think talks about the, the fake pandemic. Yes, it's a very good video and a good exposition of the mask problems in terms of this, what these fibres are and aren't or worms or whatever you want to call them but he, again i don't think he says uh, you, you shouldn't be wearing a mask it's dangerous to wear a mask for long longer periods and also we had uh, large crowds gathering in london at the weekend on the 20 what will it have been 25th i think 24th 25th of april um some were saying there was nearly a million people there, which is a good sign that a few more people are really uh, understanding that this is not what they claim it is. Still not enough. You know, I still think we need to see that uh, some of the mainstream media outlets need to be shut down first or taken over before we're going to see any real difference. Um, we probably need ten times this number of people before things are really going to start to be turned back, if ever they are turned back. So, uh, But it's an encouraging sign, you know, and the police here that this was... I think this part of this must have been uh, rigged to, to somehow or set up. I just don't think this is... There are people in the crowd chucking stuff, and uh, I'm really not sure, you know, um, about this video and how if this was set up. I suspect it probably was. But, uh, again, I haven't investigated it. I haven't looked and see if there's any of these crisis actors in it. So, you know, you can look at that. Um, we've got David Beck now, it's coming up finally after, um, basically the police just kind of, you know, there's some people just play music, the police just barge up. It just looks like a, a setup to me, 
police just barge up and uh, try and break break these people up, and then the people are chucking gas smoke canisters or something, maybe not gas canisters, but smoke and bottles and things. You know, pe people are pretty peaceful though. They're just having a good time, and along they come and. They're not protected. Again, they're not wearing riot gear. They haven't got visors visor on them. We see in the paper that this was, you know, they got a few cuts and bruises on them. But then it just looks like they were sent in and to create trouble and make people look bad. And it's all, it just doesn't look right to me. But I'll let you watch that for yourself uh, from the links in the description. Um, the horror, well, I don't like to use the word horror, but... It almost is horrific what seems to be happening with this vaccine. Lots of people seem to be, uh, you know, dying, basically. And I've had several people write to me saying that the people have been ill. Um, you know, I, I've probably had about seven or eight people that have said they've had an adverse reaction. Uh, and not, not just people that write to me through Check the Evidence. I've had other people saying this. So this is really not good at all it's 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 far far worse than any alleged virus which i mean we knew that was going to happen people that had looked at research into this so again um no surprises there to us um now another little story which came to me yesterday was sadly that this judge from the uh, Weimar district of Germany who basically said this coronavirus is all nonsense you don't need any masks you don't need any social distancing so we're going to stop those me measures in my region the Weimar sort of region uh, or county or whichever whatever correct classification of the region is he apparently has been raided by federal police so in other words the sort of national police rather than the regional police and uh, had his phone confiscated or something so again, this is state harassment of people at the at the local level to ensure that the narrative is uh, is carried and that there are no challenges to it, you know, which has been a theme all along. And on a similar sad note, um, uh, Amazing Polly's done a couple of videos now um, about people like John Magafuli, who was the former uh, president of Zimbabwe, who challenged all of this rubbish straight off the bat. And he disappeared for a period of about two weeks and then he's turned up dead, apparently of a heart attack, but, you know, we don't really know. And she goes through all of that and the people that seem to be, you know, surrounding this whole affair. And again, it, a lot of it seems to come back to Bill, Bill, and Gates, Bill and Gates Foundation and various international agreements that are made with NGOs and stuff. So, again, you can look into that. Uh, and finally then for this video, um, we have here the um what i think might be the next big psyop and um this is a uh, um a video by a uh, dark journalist daniel list very interesting lesson it's quite long it's nearly two hours um but worthwhile listening to because he basically says yes you know the covid thing is a scam and um you really want to be thinking about what's coming out now in terms of all this you know this rehashing of the tic-tac-toe video they're talking about ufo disclosure in the media in the mainstream people like chris mellon are involved and as daniel this points out chris mellon is ex-cia that whole to the stars academy thing is old cia run and he goes through some options and and uh, what they might be doing and talks about the space force and stuff and there's some interesting bits and bobs that he's put together there so i recommend you listen to that so that takes you into the wider picture and he also mentions his interview with this chap called bruce morgan who is the son of uh, Yvonne De Carlo, uh, the Hollywood uh, film star, uh, but who later became well known, certainly in this country, uh, in for her role in the Munsters, uh, which was she was Lily Munster, uh, played opposite Fred Gwynn and those other guys in the sixties. I mean that show I think is still probably running somewhere every day and well made program, quite funny, quite uh, interesting plots and imaginative and stuff, and. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, dig I digress slightly there, sort of reminiscing about the 70s and 80s. But um, So the interview with Bruce Morgan is very interesting. He talks about visiting a crash site, or his mother did, various other things. And there's a bit about Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe, uh, and also primarily about Howard Hughes. And, and that's somebody that I didn't know much about in terms of his connection into the UFO issue. But uh, Daniel List has done a whole documentary on the Howard Hughes connection and what... Daniel List calls the um, uh, the UFO file and the X-Protect, as he calls it, 
um, the X technology. I forget the exact phrase that he uses, uh, but very interesting stuff. And he even mentions Dr. Judy Wood as well, although he doesn't. Sometimes he glosses over some of the details, and he doesn't mention Science Applications International Corporation. But it's a very interesting couple of videos there that I've linked in that post. So, or you can go and subscribe to his channel, of course. Um, so. Um, I think he, he definitely onto something and that what they could try next if the COVID scam runs out of steam. Okay, so uh, I'll leave it there for now uh, and leave you to look at those links and stuff. And uh, I wish you well and we'll see where we get to.